Let's go. Let's go. Let's freaking go, YouTube. How are you doing, everybody? Welcome to this special episode. A special episode on the amazing Vincent Van Gogh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because for the day, I'm probably going to butcher Van Gogh every time I say it. Van... I never know if it's Van Gogh or Van Gogh. Sorry, Dutch friends. I sincerely apologize for butchering your language. But, oh my god, we're going to have a special episode, but we are going to talk about this insane artist. Not, no pun intended, like, insanely good and talented. An artist that I, like, the best analogy that I've found for Vincent, and I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call him Vincent for the entire evening, I think. Because it's much simpler, and, and I think it works, because that's how he signed his painting. So, we're, we're gonna call him Vincent, simplifying spelling and pronunciation for everybody here. Um, Vincent, what I like to call him, the analogy that I like to use for this artist is the shooting star of art. Really. And I'm gonna explain why, and you'll see that this this analogy will make a whole lot of sense. It's a shooting star. Bursting through the sky. And in this episode, for this, like, actually, well, look, well, Cody, which is, who is a real fan, real fanboy, like, number one fanboy on the entire internet, is really happy that we're doing a, a Van Gogh episode and uh, he reminded me that tomorrow, so the th uh, March the 30th, is Vincent's birthday. So uh, I want to see some happy birthday to uh, Vincent. Uh, how old would he have been? I don't know, I'm not gonna calculate. But he was born in... wait, 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 wait a minute. Uh, he was born in 1853. March 30th. So, that's what we have. So, happy birthday in advance. We're one day ahead, but well, I'm probably going to finish the stream when it's uh, mid almost midnight here. Uh, it's midnight somewhere in the world, so happy birthday to Vincent. Happy birthday. Oh my god, we are going to have a, a an episode, and I think maybe we'll have to make two parts. I'm pretty sure we'll make it two parts. Because I'm not going to talk about... I'm sorry, I'm not going to talk about the most interesting part of Vincent's life. So, I could, t I could tell you all about Sunflower Vincent. I could tell you all about um, Starry Night Vincent. But we all know that. What I really want to focus on today is... Like, how he, he got from starting as a complete lost soul at like 23 not even figured out what he wanted to do with his life decided to start becoming an artist at 27 and then having this meteoric art career and then a violent crash keep in mind this the the analogy of the shooting star how did he come from like being completely lost to becoming one of the most influential artists in in the world and that's what we're going to talk about today like the early career you know i don't want to just talk, tell you all about you know only the best the best part i want to tell you about the how he got from nowhere and self-taught his way into genius. How he became Vincent. Hence the, the title of the stream. Becoming Vincent. Like, it's not easy to be who you are. Like, some people say, hey, just, um, you want to make good art, you just, just be, be true to yourself, man. Be, be who you are. 
like it's easy. Like it's easy. And, and tracing the journey of Vincent, starting from his, like, early works, completely unlike what we know from him, but still a, a glimmer of what he will become. Like, still a, a, a little seed, like the little seed of what will become, will grow to be um, the tree. No, no, this is now she doesn't work. Like, the seed, the seedling, the tree, no, it doesn't work. Like, it's not for Van Gogh. It's a shooting star. Basically, like, the analogy is like that. Look at, look at him. He was completely lost in the void, in nowhere, like, in the darkness. His early work, let's have a look, let's just have a look. His early work is very dark. Look at that, how gloomy it's like. Imagine like the, the, the meteor, like the asteroid or whatever you want to call it, like the rock floating in space in nowhere and slowly, slowly coming into contact with the Earth, shining bright in the sky in his most, um, like shining bright. Like, look at how we are, like, sliding ahead in the timeline here. And, and all of a sudden, this burst of color all over the place. And then the sudden crash. Out of nowhere. Just disappearing, just as he came. I, I really like this analogy. Like, coming out of the darkness. The darkness of, of his early upbringings. You know, the, the, the lens of the north. The coal mines. The, the peasant life uh, he was not a peasant but he uh, he worked with uh, as a minister for peasants uh, and and how he his art moved to from dark to light and I, I I think it's it's really connected to how his art moved from being almost the art of someone else to becoming the art of Vincent, like Vincent's made art, in a way. So, becoming Vincent, yeah, I think it's a good title. And it's going to be super helpful if you're willing to become an artist yourself or make art and teach yourself, become an artist with your own, you know, by your own willpower. Um, super, super inspiring, uh, lots of things to learn. Uh, recommend looking at... Okay, sorry, I don't have the... I want to show this alert, but I need to put it here. Sorry, I'm, I'm gonna just readjust my screen here. All right, I recommend looking at Van Gogh's museum site for better depiction of early work. Yep, we'll do that. It's right here. It's right here, first steps as an artist. This website, this is the Van Gogh Museum.nl. Very, very good. Uh, we're gonna have a look at this. Um, like a diamond in the sky. Like this analogy. Um, Vincent has become a meme in our chat now. For pretty much. Well, because you're such a fan, but like it's still even if you weren't such a fanboy, it would still be a, a super interesting artist to cover, just for inspiration. So, yes, it will do. I think... yeah, I think I'm gonna try to adjust... Okay, alright, so, anytime I, I um, like, don't, don't hesitate to fact check me on the dates and stuff like that, because my... Um, my memories of uh, Vincent's life mostly come from his letters. S this is a huge resource. Like, if you're an artist, you're trying to learn, like, out of nowhere, you're, I don't know, uh, 43 and you decide to change everything and become an artist, you need to read some of this. Because Vincent didn't even start uh, before he was 27. So it's not like he went straight from, you know, uh, school to art school to becoming a famous artist. Like, he struggled a lot. He didn't know what he wanted to do exactly. And it's all... And it's really well written. 
he wrote really well and you almost step inside of his brain and and think get to see how he thinks and it's um it's a very uh very good very good read really recommend letters to his uh, brother theo we'll we'll see we'll definitely talk about see theo um very um a very crucial uh, character in the Vincent story, uh, a supporting character. But um, without Theo, there would be no Vincent. Like we wouldn't know about this guy. We, like, it was this obscure, you know, nobody. Uh, but um, Theo made Vincent happen, which uh, and and the the the. Um, the, the letters between them are, are absolutely crucial if you're interested. Oh boy. All right, so what else? What else do we have? Let, let me have a little chat with you because I can go on forever. Like, you know, when I talk about an artist, just not, not only Vincent, but when I start talking about art, you know, I get pretty nerdy. So you have to stop me. So I'm, I'm gonna read some of what you nerds are talking about in the chat. Um, I bought Reed pens just because of him. Nice. Uh, Vincent's sense of texture is amazing in his sketch. Yeah, we're going to do that. And today we're going to, um, if I'm making a little study in the end, um, it will be mostly a, a little sketch because that's how everything started. And I, and I think it's, uh, it's also one, uh, crucial thing to understand. We want to get into Vincent's um, journey. Sometimes I want to call it career, but that's not what you can call a career. Like it's something else. It's, it, like it's not a career uh, in his in his case. Uh, let's have a look at this um, so that we have. So yeah, um, this is a, a little short bio for you if you want from Wikipedia from Google Arts and Culture I'm not gonna read that but like if you want to pause for just context and detail if that's what you want that's not what we're gonna focus on we're gonna more what, what I really want to 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 try to cover in this in this journey in this exploration is more the 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 three things that got him moving into this and and i think it's aspiration like i don't know uh, i don't know if it's a word aspiration not not inspiration there's also inspiration the, the number one is aspiration what aspires him to paint what drives him to paint admiration who he admires and who he looks up to as models in his brain because uh, having a model and admiring other artists is absolutely essential if you if you learn by yourself uh, you need to have your role models and follow their steps and inspiration so three things aspiration admiration inspiration and this triad of, of things changed drastically in um, in the time that he was evolving, moving from from the Netherlands to Belgium to uh, a short time in in London, if my memory is right, and he, he this this kind of evolved very quickly. It changed when he, he moved to Paris. Cody, can you remind me? You you told me about like the the different phases in his art journey can you can you write them down uh, because i don't have them in in, in my uh in my memory they're not engraved in my memory right now so I, I don't know don't know where to start really but yeah yeah vincent's early life this is going to be so helpful if you're if you're self-taught such like like i'm not kidding it's an inspiration and and I'm I'm not saying that lightly. It's really something. I'm pretty sure they made movies out of that. But it's very like it's a huge story, very inspiring story, uh, and uh, it's a story that you have to learn if you want to 
just out of nowhere decide to make art, you need to know about this story. There are certain stories that you need to uh, learn about, and this is this is one of them. And the story of how Van Gogh, how this guy became Vincent Van Gogh, the artist that we know today, is crucial. All right, so let's let's bring the let's bring up the heat. So, um, so from. From my, um, if you want, by the way, there are notes uh, because Cody is not kidding when he says that he's okay. Discord is uh, so there are notes by uh, our by Cody here that you can find on the Discord. Actual notes, you can actually read them. Look at that, just as good as reading a book. So um, if you can, um, the, and the, the the handwriting is pretty good actually. It's pretty um, pretty easy to read. I I would say like like if you look at my handwriting, it's not as good as this. So if you're interested in in a damn a pretty complete bio. Oh my god! Look at that. Well, if you're interested in an unofficial bio <laughs> by our man Cody here, uh, check it out in the Discord. And um, yeah, so from from my memory, but Cody will fact check me. Um, all right, so here, first of all, I was asking for that, the periods. So the one, two, three, four, five. So the drawing period, the dark period, in Newnan, Paris, Alls, and saint remy aux vers sur -Oise. Ah, okay. So, what we're gonna see today is uh, the draw from drawing to Paris, and we're gonna start right before he moves to Alls. So, a thousand friends, you know, the, the wheat fields, the starry night, all this good stuff, sunflowers and all, like, all the good Vengo like essentials happened later on and we're gonna stop right before he start I'm sorry I'm gonna pronounce <laughs> probably disappoint some of you um, because we're not gonna see you know pretty much the like the best <laughs> but that's ac that's actually what matters we want to see the lame ass drawings that he did before he found who he was actually meant to be. Because when you look at your lame-ass drawings, you'll understand, okay, there's something more to this, and I need to push through, right? And yeah, that's the that's the thing. So, that's what we're gonna do. Um, I'm not gonna read this all, but... Um, so... Based on what I remember from him, at 23 he was still lost in space. He was still out of the, out in the void of uh, existence, not knowing exactly what he wanted to do with his life. But one thing, he was pretty, um, pretty religious. He had a, I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, he was religious, uh, but he had a very strong sense of the sacred, like. Uh, the, the sacred of of human actions. There is an, um, a real sense of, throughout his entire life, there is a real sense of urgency, the urge to be helpful, the urge to make good in the world, and the, the urge to make uh, art and good were kind of the... the uh, the 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 two faces of the same coin, like the the goodness, the Screenshot sacred. taken in the Discord. Uh, were kind of um, kind of um, how to say, yeah, two different aspects of the same idea of um, yeah of good, fighting evil with art almost, um, or serving God. 
a sense of the sacred in in his work. Um, so oh, that's uh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna just get there in a minute because yeah. Um, hold on. Okay. Um, yeah, he was a priest for a while, and that's what we are going to start with. That's his um, first idea was to serve God, basically, and he uh, he screenshot taken in the studied a, um, he studied theology at some point. He he wanted to to become a minister, or I don't know exactly. I, I'm not um I'm not sp into the specifics of the the religion terms and all. But yeah, he wanted to work for the church, definitely. A lay preacher. Okay, a lay preacher. I don't know what the lay preacher is exactly, but that's um, that's when he got in um, in Belgium. He went to work in Belgium for this time. In like, imagine we're still we're still the the. The meteor is still in space, still floating in the void. And imagine the darkness. And I'm really talking about the darkness here. The dark. Imagine the fog on this desolate field with coal mines. With this dark earth. The peasants here are just have their... Um, have their um, feet covered in dirt like this you know very f this dirt full of clay and all and this is where he got this is where he was working with the peasants from the the, the Borinage it's a it's an area in in Belgium which is mostly um, mostly at the time it was a coal mining area and with very poor people, lots of misery, very harsh conditions, and darkness. Like, imagine being stuck there for a winter near the coal mines, and and the, the soil is just sticky with this dark mud. Well, this is wh where he was at the time. And Vincent was taking inspiration from everything he saw. He was always observing and... And this is why his early work is very dark. We're going to see some of his early work. If you look at that, um, this is exactly it. You can look at that and, and, and you feel the darkness, right? And it doesn't feel like the Vincent we know, but that's what he knew back then. He grew up pretty much in the northern Europe, and that's all he knew, like flat lands, dark, muddy earth, dark earth umber, exactly. And, and, okay, all right, so Cody fact checking me for the first time. He was a lay preacher in London a missionary in Belgium's Borinage. So I'm not sure this is the Borinage, but this is this should be what it looks like. So stained permanent black, according to Valdemar. <laughs> okay. Uh, he was also very inspired by Rembrandt, which is also like not good for brightness and, and light colors, if you, if you ask me. Uh, inspired by Rembrandt, well, these cutters make sense, like the dark, the brown, uh, the brown style is re this kind of Rembrandt-ish um, inspired style. So this is where, but this is where he was. Um, and then he, uh, he decided, so he did a lot of things. He, well, you can look it up here in the bio, but um he did a lot of things, and he decided to become a, an artist in the conversation with uh, Theo. Actually, Theo, not convinced, but through, throughout the conversation, um, the idea occurred that, hey, Vincent was drawing some of these uh, 
Vincent was drawing some of these landscapes, some of these uh, characters that he was that he was um, living with back then in the Borinage. And Theo said, hey, that's that's actually pretty good. So you should make more drawings. And Vincent immediately found this. It, it immediately clicked. So this is where, you know, the, this, the moment where the rocks floating in space starts pulling towards the earth, you know, slowly driving towards the earth. This is the moment where the attraction catches on, like the the gravity Screenshot of the earth will not the let go. Um, and this is when he decided to become an artist. So he first learned. So when I say it's self-taught, you look through the bio and you'll you'll say, hey, he wasn't self-taught. He had like actually several um, teachers, and the first teacher was Anton Mov, and he was a cousin. Yeah, from a cousin by marriage, celebrated artist Anton Mov. Um, and he was the first one to teach the the rudimentary, you know, elements of painting, how to handle a brush, uh, how to do the basics of watercolor oils. And Vincent was fascinated. And this is when he decided, he, he sort of got this idea that instead of serving God by being a minister and studying theology, which is something that his parents were much more fond of. He, the, the, the parents of, of Vincent wanted him to um, to have an, an actual career. And, and this is so reminiscing of so many people telling me about how they want to start making art in their life and their parents are just uh, not on board. So many people are in this same situation, like Vincent was, and Vincent's parents didn't want him to really pursue this type of this type of lifestyle because they considered that this would be just a, a life of misery, and they were right. Um, but Theo, Theo was supportive of his desire because Theo was working in the fields of arts. Um, and uh, so, yeah, Vincent went and studied in in The Hague with uh, Anton Mauve. So, first teacher. But if you look at this kind of art, really, what did Vincent learn from a painter like that? He learned the basics, but you can see almost nothing of his style in Vincent. Sometimes you, you see that he did learn a couple things but that he didn't learn to be vincent from from being taught by mauv definitely and and you see that like a good art school technically makes you become yourself like you can see what kind of art school it is by checking out if all of the students who get out of the school have a very similar style and almost all copy what they're being told in the, the program. And a good school technically should make artists, should produce young artists that have all each very different styles and know how to express themselves through the art that they have learned. Uh, so, yeah. In this case, um, Vincent's style was not too affected by... He learned how to use paint, but um, still, I, I would still consider him being self-taught based on that. And also, it just... It just... It was just so short. Every time Vincent learned... Every time Vincent went anywhere it was always so short it's like try teaching a shooting star you go ahead try teaching a shooting star it's gone <laughs> it's gone it's going somewhere else 
So this is the the more depressing side of um, of his life. Look at that. Um, yeah, the 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 mm, where was it? I don't know where where it was. Hogovan. I don't know exactly about this, but well, you you check out the the the, the text here. He met Sin Hornik. And she was a pa uh, a former prostitute. And everybody was shocked. He had a screenshot taken in the Discord. He had a, a love affair with her. He was I think he was just I don't know. You Cody, you tell me what you think what was their relation together. I think he was honestly in love, but he was too much into his art um ideas. To, and she she really had like uh, serious problems. She was living in in misery, and he left her. Um, and she's the one depicted in in the sorrow here. So is this the more gloomy um, period of his life? Like he was. Uh, he was really down at the time, and I think he was starting to you know make start the the actual living not making any money the, the actual uh art artistic lifestyle not making any money and i think from uh, he had a couple of jobs in his before he became an artist and after he became an artist he decided to go with no money at all and the only person sending money was his brother theo that's that's why I'm saying that no without any Theo there would be no Vincent. They they go they go side by side like they they go together. Because uh that's Theo who regularly sends money at this at this time in his life. And he's just moving all over the place. I, I think it's it's kind of a drenth Pulling his spleen, he traveled to the countryside to draw and paint the Heathland Moors. He thought the landscape beautiful and set to work in good spirits. Nevertheless, the province did not only bring him peace and inspiration. Superb, staying here depends on many things, depending on whether one has the money for it, depends on the weather. And yeah, after less than three months, the rain called in isolation draw Vincent away from Drenth to his parents new home in Brabant village of Noonan. Okay, so you can see how his early career was so dark and we'll we're gonna have a look at at what he produced during this time. Look at that. Very dark, very gloomy, but very much like the atmosphere back then. Uh, portraits of peasants, fishermen but look at how the sky is like and I, i'm not surprised i mean i live in northern france and the sky like right now it's raining it's been gray for like three months and yeah it's not surprising it looks like that it's pretty flat like we don't have the superb landscapes that they have in southern france here this is the north this is a peasant And yeah, it does look like that. It's still not Vincent yet. That's his early work. Let's have a look at where we are at here. And yeah, next he sort of started to specialize in this period of painting peasants and painting farmers and the most well-known... Um, hold on, where is the potato eaters? Well, okay, let's check it out. I'm pretty sure it's going to be here. Yeah, the potato eaters. Okay, let's check out. Okay, the potato eaters. It's here. I'm just trying to have a good, okay, good image. So this is the kind of art that he was making. Um, 
I'm glad that he switched styles, but how do you go from this? How do you go from this to, I don't know. Let me check out something. How do you go from this to this? Look at that. How do you go from, ah, sorry. How do you go from this to this? You have to find yourself. The, the, the response is that you have to find yourself along the way. It's a journey towards finding yourself, finding your, your true self. It's exactly the same thing that uh, can be found here. How do you go from this to this? This is exa exactly what I want to focus on for this entire uh, stream. We're going to start at the bottom picture here. And, and technically, um, this, is, uh, this summarizes the journey. Look at how the, the, the style, how, how different it is, the treatment. He's starting looking into himself, tr taking himself as a model. But look at how distant it is from himself, how, how unlike himself it is. And yet it's very classical. The, the manner is, is okay. I mean, this is what they can, could be Screenshot teaching at taken the time. In the Discord. This is something not unusual for uh, the, the kind of artistic teaching that they would be doing at the time. Um, but so unlike him. And this is Vincent. And my only questioning is like, this is the, like, it's extremely complicated when you're investing time and effort and energy into producing this kind of paintings, then it's easier to move on with the same technique, the same approach, the same mindset, same brushes, same palette, and let's do it all over again. This complete switch, there is something to it, and that's what that's the entire thing we're trying to explore here. So yeah, not here yet, not here yet. It's not even the the, the good timeline because we're pretty much going to stop here um okay we're gonna stop i i don't know uh, after he leaves paris basically so i think it's this year okay yeah it should be between here between 88 and 89 all right so the potato eaters this is what he had and uh, theo was working in uh, Theo was working in in Paris as an art dealer. That's good. Like your brother is uh, your brother is, is an art dealer. That's the best thing you want as an artist, uh, because well, why not take advantage of your networking? Uh, like there's no better networking that than having someone uh, from your family in in the art business. So he sent this to. Um, to his brother Theo in Paris and the people in Paris were not impressed by the potato eaters and yeah Screenshot no kidding taken in the discord no kidding 1885 was uh, a time when you had tons of uh, of new new art in Paris it was the the blooming era of the impressionists and people were really not impressed in this it's almost more than the brown style. It's almost green. Very gloomy, very dark. I would not be surprised if it's not anybody's favorite painting by Van Gogh. So that's what he did. And then after that, um, he... That's crazy how many things he did in his short life. Uh, he went to Antwerp for a short amount of time to study art. He joined the Academy of Art and he all of a sudden became a classically, like, joined um, the, the classes that teach you to paint and draw classical, like real classical, like doing bargs, doing, um, doing what, uh, how is it called, figure, figure drawing, figure cast painting, Stuff like that. 
but he was it was not for him it was not for him but he he learned frantically and relentlessly that's one one thing for sure so went into the academy of arts but um yeah was not his um okay sorry i was checking okay this this other mic is not working but okay um yeah i'm uh, just checking this mic okay sorry sorry for that so yeah not for him maybe um <laughs> the skeleton is my cover for my ipad nice uh, i hope we can find the documents yeah it's not documents it's um it's the van gogh uh, i'm gonna put the uh, actually i'm gonna put the link but uh, actually uh, i'm gonna put the link for that it's the biography by just click on vengachmuseum.nl i'm gonna put that in the um in the chat actually because i think Yeah, I think I can put that and I'm probably going to add this in the description as well for good measure. Okay. Now I'm glitching out. All right, so no, I can't apparently update the description, but okay, I'll do that later or when I have time. All right, Venga Museum. So short biography, but kind of uh, kind of good. I think it it summarizes well enough without getting too much into the details, like I do. <laughs> uh, well, actually, I don't go into the details. I'm mostly focused on the evolution and the, the evolution of the art. So a short, short, short um, time in Antwerp couple of months I think and then he moved to Paris so that's in 1886 100 year before I was born so this was done in Antwerp the skeleton with a cigar <laughs> you can still see the brushwork though you can already see that he was really into the thickness into painting big painting loose you can see some traces here already of vincent's approach but you don't have the 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 sort of the coma um the, the the coma brush brush style yet command switching to palette for 10 seconds hey that's my uh drawing gear and this is a little magazine as well that i have back in my to palette. easel back to easel is nothing so here should be here all right <laughs> You can change title, but not description, apparently. Okay. They recently distributed a Pokemon card with Pikachu as Vengo. It's very cute. What? Uh-huh, interesting. I don't know your art too well, but the potato eaters actually sort of reminded me of your lighting somehow. Wow. Well, my, my art is pretty dark, but... Um, I'm very, I'm very much a Caravaggist in mine, so um, I, I, I see, I kind of see the, the gloominess, the darkness. I have some works that are very dark and Actually, this is a reflection of the mindset of, 
of the artist in a way and the when i was feeling really down and my art was very very dark very gloomy and this was a tough time for vincent as well this this era here was a very tough time so um not surprising that it all looks super dark and and, and strong and harsh like that it's no surprise at all all right so um let's let's move on what else what else do we have antwerp so he did lots of classical studies in antwerp He has his early palette in his letters to Theo. So what is it? What's the palette of the potato eaters? Yeah, um, can you can you check it out, uh, Cody? The 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 early palette. That's kind of interesting, actually. I, I haven't that in in the books here. Okay. Uh, so what's next? What's next is Paris, and yeah. Um, I'm not just um, just uh, saying that because I'm 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 French, but this is Paris is where it happened back then. Not anymore, not as much anymore, but um, this is where everything happened back then. This was the heart, the yes, the the heart. Hold on, the heart of art. Okay, whatever, you, you get what I'm saying. The art, the heart of the art world um, was Paris at the time. This was the more vibrant scene uh, if you wanted to become a painter of any style, really, at the time. Uh, no contest. And it, it was like that until um, the Second World War. So you had from the Impressionist to modern art was mostly Paris was kind of the capital of everything happening back then and he was very excited to move to Paris to join his brother and actually so excited that he he came unannounced <laughs> uh, and uh, and just uh, decided to crush uh, to uh, to crash at his brother's uh, flat apparently so that's when he went from dark to light. I really like how they uh, call these uh, this era from 1986 to 88 from dark to light because I, I think it really summarizes very well what happens when he joins Paris and things switched. And coming back to my analogy, this is the moment like the the meteor is starting to get into the atmosphere and it's starting to sparkle. It's just starting to sparkle. That's right there. That's where it's happening in this moment, in this moment in time. I told you already, like we have three things to to look at every time we, we talk about Vincent. And three things that are um, that we have to follow in his life. Aspiration, what drives him? Admiration, who he admires or who he meets and talks to. And three is, um, is um, inspiration, so what kind of subjects he paints. And this all changes when he comes to Paris. It all changes. In Paris, he starts to... First of all, what was driving him before was more uh, serving God, but with art. In Paris, it changes. In Paris, it's more finding yourself, finding your true self and becoming an artist, becoming Vincent. The, the first, the early moment of his career, he was very religious, very had a very strong sense of the sacred. So his excuse to make art was, I'm going to serve God, but instead of using, you know, um, the Bible, I'm going to use art to, you know, um, praise the praise the beauty of the Lord, right? So this was the his first 
aspiration in the early times, but then it switched to now I'm in Paris and I want to become an artist. I want my aspiration is to become an artist and and be Vincent van Gogh, learn everything I can learn about art, and and just do that all the time. He was relentlessly working, uh, and uh, all he was he was always relentlessly working, but his aspirations changed in a way. Okay, so we had um, posted the pat letter in the Discord. Can't read it because it's in French. Okay, <laughs> I'll read it out. All right, let's see. Oh, look at that! Super interesting. So uh, Vincent was using what time was it for the the potato eaters? Super interesting uh, document, Cody. Thanks. Uh, Blanc d'argent, which is flake white, jaune de nappe, Naples yellow, uh, ochre jaune, yellow ochre. What is that? Ochre rouge, red ochre. Ocre brûlé, which is burnt umber, I, I guess. Terre de Sienne. Cobalt. Cobalt ou bleu de... C'est cobalt blue. Noir d'ivoire, ivory black. And vermilion. Vermilion. Okay, super interesting. So, let's see who can translate. Um, <laughs> who who ha who got it right from the translation? And this is the original document. All in the letters. The letters are so crucial. I don't think I have the. I don't think my book has the reproduction. The re the reproduction. It has some reproductions of the the. The paintings he's talking about in black and white, some of them, not all of them, uh, but doesn't have this, this, I think, I don't remember. Well, too bad. Okay, uh, I'll check that later. Cobalt or Prussian blue? Okay, yeah, cobalt or Prussian blue. Bleu de Prusse. Bleu de Prusse is Prussian blue. Hey, Balsam! Everything sounds better in French. You're right. Tout sonne toujours mieux en français. Tu as raison. Salut. Okay, let's go. Let's go for uh, the next part. What we're talking about? Yeah. So what I said, uh, the, his aspiration changed. So his goal changed. Uh, his admiration changed because in Paris, he got to meet a lot of new people, very innovative artists, and that changed a lot. So this is where it, it's all um, about here. He got to meet uh, Toulouse-Lautrec. He got to meet uh, Pissarro. He got to meet Seurat, Signac, uh, Gauguin. And uh, Gauguin had a, a big role in his later life, but he got to meet him first in Paris. And this changed um, what he considered possible. So remember, he was doing mostly this, and all of a sudden he's meeting, um, he's meeting, the same type of subject, peasants, Done by Pissarro. Look at that. So peasants, right? This is what, how v v Vincent was doing them before, and now he meets guys that do them like that. And all of a sudden, it it clicks in his brain that he can actually use colors he can and he will he will from this time on something also very interesting is the research here this is Pissarro this is not Van Gogh okay this is not Vincent but this is the kind of people that he met there right sometimes it's the people you meet that change you 
So make sure you are surrounded with the right people. Um, it's always people that you are with that change you in a way. But so a lot of um, it was very trending at the time to work like that with um, I don't know split cutters, split cutters with tiny strokes, optical mixing. Basically, the colors they blend, but optically, there was there were new discoveries on optics and how our vision works, and they were all so happy to um, check out the this new theory. Oh, you put orange and this and this. There was a big thing about complementaries and all. I'm not a fan of this. I'm not a fan of this style. It's not the best by Pissarro. Definitely not. I, I don't like how they treated it. And I'm much more a fan of how Vince, Vincent will, Vincent's take on this will go way beyond that. This is still kind of... I find this kind of weak. It doesn't have like body. It doesn't have structure. It doesn't. It's lacking spine. When I'm looking at that, I see a washed off pointyism. I don't like this. I don't like this treatment. And I, I think it's it, it feels weak and washed off. But it wouldn't feel that way back then. It would feel so innovative and fresh and new. It feels weak and it feels spineless to me because I know Vincent. And I know what's coming up in Vincent's life. So no, no, nothing wrong to say about Pissarro, very, uh, very important artist and all. But because I know Vincent, I can't look at that and think that it's good anymore. Like Vincent sucked the substance out of these paintings by making his art the way he made it. Just to show you, I'm going to show you do a, a little side by side. I'm going to move back in time, go beyond time and space. Let's take this, for example, the harvest. It's a field, right? And, and it's pointless to compare, right? But you can, you can relate the inspirer with the inspired. And I know, I know it's pointless to, to just put them side by side. It's very pointless, right? But here's this, this optical color blending theory, like doesn't click for me, but the way the way Vincent's is, you know, cutting down cutters, but keeping them, uh, keeping them alive like that, not, not making this optical nonsense that I think doesn't work, but the optical mostly work in this. The complementaries work more in the objects. Look at that. There is complementaries. There is no way that this whatever it is, this path here, there's no way that it was blue in real life. But it, Vincent chose to make it blue on purpose, right? I'm talking about a period that I said I wasn't going to touch, but... And here, it's more, you, you kind of force the blue into, because the theory says that if you put the dots next to each other, when you step away, it will appear like brown. Okay, good. But I'm not a fan of this coloring here. I'd much rather, look at how it's like, how it's dotted like that. I'm not a fan. I much rather look at this kind of line, how there's blue ever present here. But it's much more subtle. This outline here, 
works much better in my opinion like this still has body it still has spine i like it much better in the approach so yeah so this is the kind of people that he meets though and from there it's it's done he's done with this uh, it's he's done with this no more no more of this uh, first of all the, the landscape is much different and also something super important that uh, is going to change in in still in the admiration admiration part is this Japanese prints uh, is a big fan it's very very fashionable at the time uh, very um, a lot so lots of people are collecting them in Paris including Theo and this kind of revelation uh, it's like it would be um, this is a copy that he did and this is not the yeah it's not the original but the original I can tell you almost looks exactly like that it's a, a stamp a wood wood carving I think uh, Japanese wood carving very traditional Japanese woodcut woodcut yeah that's how they're called but Vincent almost copied it, not exactly, but um, he copied it nonetheless. Um, and yes, the inspiration from this type of art is definitely, definitely something. Still not fine his style, look at that. This looks more like Pissarro. See what we were talking about? Still not not find his style still not the brushwork that we know and love not there yet but you can see that the colors have shifted completely still a gray sky but there's color popping everywhere wood block print it's called a wood block print okay thank you cody The whole movement is Japanese, if you're interested to look it up. Yeah, maybe maybe some other day is going to take me years if I start jumping into Japanism. Then we also have Orientalism, even though Vincent was not uh, was not marked by Orientalism, but it was the movement just before um, before Japanism came into uh, became fashionable in Paris. I think they had new trends. Like like they have TikTok trends now. <laughs> they had artistic trends back then. Every day, I guess. Uh, okay, so nineteen eighty five. So you can see how it's slowly moving. We're slowly moving away from that. And uh, yeah, a very important painter that we have to mention also. Uh, still in the admiration category is um, this guy named guy is, is not famous but he taught Vincent um, Cormon I think uh, have to check it out well he learned with this French um, almost classical painter and that, I think this is why he painted this he was uh, he was learning in the studio of a French painter called. Hold on. Co yeah, Cormont. But no, not Cormontaigne. Okay, so he was teaching with this academic painter named Fernand Cormont. So back then, he was in the studio with him. So in his studio, so yeah, Vincent is here. Um. 
So you have to imagine that the studio is basically there is a master painter and the studio is a place where they all learn. I think there is actually a photo. Oh yeah, pupils in the studio of Fernand Como. It was right there. <laughs> all this time it was right there. Uh, pupils. So this is what the a studio... Can't I make this bigger? This picture is so tiny. So all the students would just... Uh, Get in the studio of a, an illustrated and well-known celebrated artist and they would all learn from there and learn how to become artists themselves. Learn from the figure, learn, learn from casts, uh, learn like the classical way basically. Definitely, it was definitely the trend back then. Yeah, they had so many trends. It was really the era of trends before it was like we we think that we invented every anything with internet, but they they have trends <laughs> like that. Um, okay, so he got into uh, his studio, but still, like it's not like Cormon had anything to do with how Vincent's style looked, and if anything, to me. Cormont, I don't know if Cormont made him do this, but the, the kind of teaching that you learn there would make Vincent make a painting that looks like that. So let's, let's have a look at the brushstroke. They still have a big focus on brushwork, but first of all, the, the cutter, the skin tones are still ghastly feels like the potato eaters all over again uh, there is this big outline but here in this case most of the time the outline in vincent's work is colorful but here it's black the black outline the dreaded black outline that I say to anybody trying to teach art, trying to learn art, don't do a black outline. It's not a comic book. You're going to mess it up and it does mess it up. It's, it does make it a very gloomy, very dull, very muddy. That's the dreaded muddiness that most painters try to avoid. And there you go. That's how you get it. Unlike now let me check a more recent portrait yeah let's still yeah let's still take this one as an example here this this is a very light uh, painting pretty uncommon you still have an outline here but the outline is colored chromatic you outline with color with red with pink with orange with dotted blue um. let me try to find another one what I'm talking about you outline with a line of color and if you, if you do that a natural outline even a very fat thick line like what Vincent did here even though it's not a fat line look at how it moves here and then it's interrupted it's a textured line it's a vibrant line it's um it's a very very um how to say yeah vibrant i guess i don't have a better word because it's done with color you do that with black and everything turns dull and and gray and brown and muddy and that's what you don't want generally so either no outline at all so only skin tones from like the shadows to the light 
turning the form away or you forget about it, or you if you want to bring a slight edge on the, the 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 contour the outside contour of your shape then do that with a color in this case he's using green i would not recommend using green he's he can do it because that he can pull it off uh, because of this kind of crazy style. But even for a realistic portrait, um, you can do it with something like more like a pink. You can do that. Like this is called chromatic, uh, chromatic modeling. Uh, basically, well, here it doesn't show really mu very much, but I want to just um, tell you all about it uh, because I'm not going to find a good example in, in Vincent's work because he was not really into that. I'm talking more about classical drawing, like the, the type of uh, classical painting, the type of painting that I do. You can do chromatic modeling, which would, which would mean you take a, a an extra touch of red and you caress the outer contour so that the form kind of turns away into the distance, into the background, you caress it away, not with a brown, not with a dark, not with black, but with a chromatic, a chromatic element, mostly for skin tones of red or an orange, that will just slightly make the, the shape turn away, I feel like there's volume, without darkening it really, it's more a chromatic effect and works really well. Um, in this case, you kind of see it, but because of the brushwork, you don't. It's not exactly what I mean. Um, but yeah. But you can see, for example, here how all this side here is more pink and orange. How it feels like there is a shadow here. Like you can see the light hits from this side. And all this side is getting into shadow, but the shadow is actually created by bringing this warm pink orange, and it and it makes the the entire skull turn away in this direction. So pretty interesting, uh, interesting treatment here. Even though it's not exactly the the kind of stuff that I was mentioning, but. Also a very, one of my favorites from him. This is how you make pointism. Take that Pissarro. The guy just came and, and look at your stuff and did way better. Look at that. I don't really like Pissarro that much. I don't have anything against him, but when you see this type of pointism, now that's different shit. This painting is still mesmerizing to me, like, I don't know how you make something this good with uh, pointism and with a brushwork like that. I think it's the best one uh, out of all of them. And I think, like, this is the final result of becoming Vincent. Because everything changed. He makes the illusion of an edge, exactly. Let's let's see if there is an illusion of an edge like that. Yeah, here. Well, this is more very Vincent, um, but can be interesting to, for everybody here. Making the outline, sure. Making the outline, like technically in my book, it's a no-no. But if you want to make an outline, make it like that. Make it like that. If you want to make an outline, make it like that. Cody, I'm, I'm curious. Would you know uh, what kind of palette he was using at the time? This is... Um, 1887. What, what kind of palette was he using for a painting like that? Because the palette is very different from what you what you showed us earlier. 
Um, it's crazy different here. Yeah, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is Vincent happening in front of your eyes. This, this is exactly Yeah, this is this happened. Like in how many years did it take him to get to this point? He started, let's see, in started in eight, 1880 and this is 87, so seven years later, and he reached peak. Uh, this is the point where he shines more. Like the the shooting star has gone into the atmosphere, it's starting to started to sparkle a bit. And then it's already sh shining bright right now, shining bright, uh, and it's, it's blinding, it's blinding. Oh, thanks, Cody, look at that. So, uh, yellow ochre, chrome yellow, cadmium yellow, chrome orange, vermilion, Prussian blue, ultramarine, lead white, zinc white, emerald green, red lake, red ochre, and raw sienna. Okay, cadmium yellow, chrome orange. Yeah, you, you see them, you see them, Can you, some very much more modern cutters here. The, it's also insane how the, the, the age of chemistry, industrialized chemistry, um, allowed painters to have uh, pigments like that in the 19th century. We have even better pigments than, them, than they had. But forget about the, 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 the brown school, the, the Rembrandt and all. They kind of had to use pretty muted colors because they didn't have cadmiums and stuff. If they had, maybe they would have changed their, their mind about that. Or maybe it was a choice. I don't know. But when you have bright, vivid color, you want to use them. So that's, that's cool. The believed pigments. Okay. Well, nothing is absolutely certain unless they do a they do an analysis. This mic is gone. I think it ran out of batteries. Okay, I still have my second mic. I always have two mics. <laughs> That's what you do when you, when you are on batteries. But yeah, what do you think made what do you think made Vincent go from 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 this to this then? So I'm curious what do you think is the most important thing? Is this the the people you meet? Is this the the style? Is this experimenting? How would you go like if you were Vincent, how would you go from the first one which is technically skilled you have all the technical knowledge, you know how to use a brush, you know how to use paint, you know how to mix your pigments, you know pretty much everything you need to learn, to learn but you're not there yet, you're not yourself that, yet. And how do you go from there to, to the, the bottom picture where you actually are making something genuine and, and good? Now, I don't think the mental illness has anything to do, dog. I don't think the... I, I don't think you need to go through that. I think it's just uh, something secondary. This, this doesn't have... Like, you have genius that don't have this kind of mental affliction. So, that would be like that. Uh, what, How it affected Vincent in this case... In our case, for what matters to us, is how he um, he died way earlier than normal, and he had problems with alcohol and all. But the mental illness itself is not how you go from the, the top picture to the bottom one. That's that's not it. That's not it. The the mental illness more affected more his personal style, but his artistic style was almost. Um, independent 
in my opinion, from the mental illness. I don't think the mental illness defines how he became an artist. The use of violets was a huge thing around this time too, yes, they accused Moni of being obsessed with violets and caused quite a commotion. Uh, the use of violet... I don't know about the commotion, but yeah, if you, if you, if you say it... I don't know if, uh, if it caused a, a debate on the violet, the use of violet. A new lustful life. Mm -hmm. I believe the people inspired him. Yeah, I do believe too. I do believe it's, it's all about the people you meet. The type of, um, of people you, you surround yourself with. And when you're living in the Borinage, when you're living near the coal mines, yeah, obviously your, your art is going to be gloomy and dark and muddy. Because it's all muddy everywhere. You're living in the fields, teaching to peasants. And the only people you meet are peasants with dirty feet and, and they eat potatoes. So that's why it's so dark. And when you are um, surrounded by, you know, you're in right now, Paris is called the city of lights. Um, and I think it was already kind of back then. So you have lights, you have colors, you have this exuberant style, this exuberant uh, colors all over the place. You also get to see uh, Japanese woodcuts, stuff like that. And it slowly works. It slowly affects how you see the world. You can't see the world before you're um before you 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 get into contact with a different vision you confront your vision with the one of yourself otherwise you and that's how you learn how to transform your vision in a way yeah i agree nicholas probably a bit reductive to ascribe his talent just to his condition Maybe he ran low on paints and he was making the most of it. Did Vincent think his recent works were good? I don't know. When you read, when you read the letters, he doesn't say, he doesn't really talk about the, the works themselves, but he talks about the subjects. And that's, that's very... It's always very well written. It's almost like he's writing, he's making paintings with words. He's talking about this uh, this landscape. He's talking about a, an old tree, a cypress tree. He's talking about um, the, the, the weeds in the fields. And he's describing the colors. And he's talking to Theo, made three paintings today. Uh, you should see how the blue reflects uh, in the the cypress trees, and the and the, the some and he's writing with very poetic, uh, very poetic words. He's not saying I did three paintings today. My paintings were really good because I really nailed how you paint this and that, and I'm really good at. I, I really did well on this. Uh, this I don't know. Um, cow. And this, uh, whatever, this olive tree. But he's, he's really like, the entire world. The entire world has the colors that he paints. That's not the paintings that make the, the world have the colors that they have in the paintings. It's the other way around. It's, it's almost like he sees the colors uh, as he paints them. And he's mostly, he thinks that the colors of the world are beautiful in this manner. Not because he paints them, but because he sees them. He sees them like that. That's what I would say. Um, I think he decided what he wanted to say. Maybe, yeah. 
But in a way, a lot of the things that he said before, like, for example, making paintings about peasants, uh, he did then, back then, in, in the late time of his career, but in a very different manner. So it still doesn't explain how you go from one to the, to, to the other. An artist is always exploring. He moved to, uh, to all. Yeah, moving to Southern France really definitely changed him in terms of how what you see there, definitely. Uh, more sunlight, more flowers, more bright colors, definitely. Funnily enough, the new paintings were hardest to sell. So he only sold one painting, uh, Cody. I think it's Vineyard. Uh, I'm not sure. He only ever sold uh, one painting. The Red Vineyard. I'm trying to look it up. He only ever sold this one. Yes, the dude, like right now, the dude is has paintings that sell for uh, several dozen millions. Maybe, um, I don't know how much they, they would sell for. And, and it was just uh, purchased for a couple bucks and probably a few drinks, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember if, uh, if if Cody wants to fact check me and, and tell me how much this was worth at the time and and try to look the actual value nowadays it, if it was for sale I don't think it is but if it was or what's the last how much did the last Vincent sold for at auction I'm curious compared to what this was sold for and and you make huge profits if you were the 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 fool crazy enough to to buy this from this guy this crazy lunatic artist um, roaming the, the the bars and the cafes um, at night and just asking for another drink and you say okay I'll I'll take this painting from you and give you a big a drink. Okay, get out of here now. <laughs> and now you're uh, just uh, filthy rich, or your 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 ears are filthy rich. Yeah, Vincent did study from atelier to other artist styles. He did study, and what's funny is that you can see how studying with others transforms him, like to the core and yet makes him very much more like him. So the more people he meets, the more like him he becomes. Since It's interesting. Like you would think the more people you meet, the more you become like others. But the more people he was meeting, the more he was becoming like himself in a way. And Every art school uh, or every art teaching program that he attended, every time he got out of there more like him and not really like the, the kind of art that's taught there. He was more... I don't know what he was learning exactly, but his vision was becoming clearer and clearer every time but this this was definitely not the the kind of stuff that he was taught back there because he was taught plaster casts figure drawing good that's good that he was learning that but um that's not how made him become him All right, so, oh my God, I lost a lot of the conversation. So 400 francs and 16 years later, it sold for 10,000. 16 years, 16 is, is not much. So he became more well-known pretty, pretty soon after he passed.
More credit needs to be given to Theo's wife for keeping his legacy alive. Oh yeah, Th Theo actually died um, later. Uh, uh, not not very not very much. Um, not too much time after Vincent passed, I think. Someone can check it out. 400 francs, I don't know what it makes today. We, we don't have the same, we don't even have the same currency anymore. Yeah, okay, the last one was sold for 117 million USD. Holy. Can't imagine what, is, what the red vineyard's in. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that if they put it for sale, they'll they'll purposely make it climb super high so that they're just for the story of oh this painting was so cheap at first and then look at how expensive it is nowadays. Why after he passed then he became famous? Well, it's it's often how it goes, right? How often how it goes, like many artists die broke and un, pretty much unknown. And they're rediscovered afterwards. And even sometimes they can be famous in their lifetime and then they, they go out of fashion, they are forgotten, and then someone finds their work much later. For example, this is the example of Caravaggio. He was famous in his lifetime. He was very much um, not comparable. But, uh, crazy lifestyle, like crazy lifestyle, life story. You can make a movie out of it, like Vin Vincent definitely, and and it's kind of the same thing. He was forgotten for a while and rediscovered relatively recently. Um, relatively recently. So yeah, that's that's a big big presentation. And that's only part one, only part one. But let, I'm gonna jump to the to the drawing now. Uh, but yeah, Vincent, coming back to my analogy, a sh shooting star, a shooting star. Tell me, there is no better analogy than that, because there is in this life, in the life of this artist, and even you can feel it in the paintings. There is always this sense of urgency. It's almost like he felt when he first started that he didn't have much time. He was like, I have to make as many paintings right now. Like there's this urgency I have to produce. You know, a lazy artist would be like, okay, I, I did two drawings this week. Okay, next day I can take a break and we'll see in three weeks what I can do. But Vincent was like relentless. Always, there was this sense of urgency. Almost like he was, he was feeling that something was up and that his time was counted. Like everybody's time is counted. Sorry to say that. So, taking inspiration from this, this sense of urgency that that moves Vincent is 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 important in my opinion like yes like like my life can end tomorrow I don't know I might not wake up tomorrow I might die suddenly unexpectedly like this happens right how many paintings can I do before this happens and this is tomorrow this is tomorrow it happens tomorrow this sense of urgency is like how many like how, what kind of shooting star will I be? Will I be the very short one or the big one? We're all shooting stars in a way. And this is super inspiring to learn about Vincent in this, in this regards. Because yes, you're a shooting star, but you're going to consume yourself. Like we all consume ourselves. That's the, the point of life. It has to end, right? And yeah. So yeah, this this relentless fever to work from in, in Vincent's life is is not for everybody though. I I agree, and uh, it's not 
not necessarily a very sane lifestyle. It actually made him, I don't know if it has, um, if it's related, but he was probably working too much for uh, to preserve his, his sanity, definitely. Uh, he was like way too much into that, but he was living that and he was living because of that. Um, like he, you can like read, read the letters. I'm telling you, read the letters because you can see that everything he lives, everything he breathes is art. It's absolutely, it's a super inspiring book. It doesn't care about anything else, which is like, I mean, not everybody's up to that, but like, yeah, I find this inspiring though. So a shooting star and he was a big, very big and short shooting star, but in a way we are all shooting stars and um, yeah. What can you, what kind of, um, what kind of bright light can you produce before you're consumed? That's the question. So, all right. <laughs> after all this, after all this nonsensical presentation, let's, um, let's move on to the drawings. All right, but I need to change batteries in my in my microphone and put my camera. So I'll leave you with, uh, I leave you for a moment. Be nice. All right, so we are going to make a little drawing study of one of Vincent's self-portrait drawings. Warning, emoji wall starts in 10, Oh my god, emoji nine, wall starts. Eight, seven, six, five, so I want to see four, a lot of stars. Three, the theme two, of this emoji one, wall is stars. Go. Emoji in, wall unlocked. In honor of this is Vincent. chaos. Seriously, we need or to break YouTube cakes, with emojis. Because that's his we birthday have one minute. tomorrow. Let's go chat. We can do it. All right. So where are the stars? I need Let's to go find chat. Stars. Quick, spam oh God, emojis. We find. need to fill the screen. No time to waste. I'm serious. We have to spam where emojis in chat okay. now before the timer runs out. Hurry yes. up. Here they are. Quick. Let's go chat. We have to spam emojis in chat now before okay, the I've timer got him. runs I've got out. Them. I've got them. No time to Start. waste. I'm serious. Hurry up. Oh my god, the Quick. emoji was not. Let's go chat. Right Let's place. go chat. Okay. Let's Sorry. go chat. Let's go chat. Happy birthday, Vincent! It ends in five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Nice, nice one. I like this theme. emoji cooldown. It's cool. It's cool to have a theme. Makes emoji wall less uh, less repetitive. Because the joke is kind of old. <laughs> so delayed. Oh yeah. When you have an ad, sometimes you get the delay. <laughs> oh, that's how it goes. Well, don't worry, you, 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 you are allowed to uh, post your emojis. They will not count, technically. I really need to redo the screen for a vertical, because the emoji was always glitching out for me. I don't know what happens. It's always glitching out in vertical. Just never wants to keep the screen placed properly. So, 
I'm gonna try studying this little um, sketch. And you recognize the man. So, it's what I'm gonna do. And this is not the best one. But this is one from the right period, and I think it um, it was used for a very significant uh, painting. And uh, yeah, so I, I it's not his best one. This one is not his best one. Definitely not. But um, so I'm not going to do this one. I'm going to do this one. All right. Uh, yeah, the cutoff. Well, whatever. Who we'll, we'll can? Um, I don't know what happened. If it's Vincent that made this or not. Don't know exactly about the story. Well, I'm gonna do this. This little part. Okay. Okay. Should I change the lens? Actually, it's kind of small. Hello, can you hear? I don't know if you can hear me right now. Check, check. Yeah, check, check. Okay, maybe better. Right. Oops, sorry. Hold on. All right. Rembrandt? Okay. You have to take a... You need to get yourself a, a good uh, book on the history of art so that you don't ever confuse Rembrandt and Vincent van Gogh ever again. good let's see size size matters okay so if I'm here Sorry to have to do that, but my presentation before was so, so long that I didn't have it. I didn't even have the time to set up the cameras. So I'm going to do graphite for this one because graphite is cool. It's what the cool guys do. What the cool kids do. Ah, come on here. Alright, so do you want to see my face or not? This is my face. Watching on my TV, nice. I'm, no, I'm not gonna die, dare um, make a painting. No. No way. No way. I don't like, it's just too unlike me. There's no way I can make anything approaching. And I'm gonna I'm gonna just hate myself for I am very inspired by uh, the I'm very inspired by the the man and the life that he had, his passion 
that you can feel in every, you know, every stroke. Hold on, I'm trying to see. Okay, I'm gonna get with the chin, I'm gonna get a bit low. Sorry. Hey, silver point obsession is a good obsession. So um I'm not even sorry for getting you hooked on silver point. That's what I do. It's the kind of a uh, it's the kind of addiction that I deal with here. Out of your comfort zone? Yeah. I, I go out of my comfort zone very often on this platform and I, I hope you can see it and and recognize it because I do. I do, I do, I do. Like for everybody saying, hey, this guy is always doing the same stuff. No, I'm, I'm getting out of my zone of comfort. I'm experimenting a lot. Um, but um, yeah. I don't know if a painting study would... I, I might, I might, I don't know. Uh, looking for my pencil, but can't find it. I want the good one. I like, have like a bajillion pencils. But I only want the one that I can't find. Well, you know, m most recently though, and and it depends on the mind, the the mind frame that you have. Uh, but right now, the time for me, personally, artistically speaking, the time for me is not time to get out of my comfort zone. It's more uh, reconnect with myself. Like, if I take inspiration from from Vincent. It's going to be like, how do I become more me and how do I become more true to myself and how do I um, stick back to my style that I've kind of lost uh, because, you know, it somehow it can get lost. How do I do that? That's my big question right now is finding myself again and Vincent is so inspiring for that. However, trying to uh, mimic him, artistically speaking, is not really what I'm looking for at the moment. Um, a little drawing like that, a drawing study is, is perfect because that's just, um, just what I want, just what I need. Um, in terms of painting, I really want to copy Florent Farge and no one else at the moment. Got this face. You, you see nothing here, I'm sorry. cameras in your face look at that isn't that perfect isn't that a good setup bumping into your camera all the time
Well, I'm gonna try to stick to kind of his style by, you know, doing all the little, little scratchy, little scratchy, like his pencil style is hard enough to to mimic. So I think like if I do a good job trying to stick to his uh, pencil, it's almost like brushing with pencil. And I can assure you it's, it's tough enough already. If I can nail that, um, I would already consider myself um, consider myself happy. Well, send paper is pretty easy to find. Just go to an hardware store. Look at that. I made this one myself and it's the best one I have actually. This one's made by a, a brand. It's not good. This one is good. And you can just uh, staple the, you cut up the pieces of sandpaper, staple them to, to a wooden, I don't know, um, it's not a stick, a little wooden plate like that. And there you go. You can, like, uh, technically you, you can peel them off when they're used, but this one is never used. Uh, the coarse one, they never get old. Like the coarse one, just tap them and they clean themselves off. The fine one, are much more uh, difficult to tap, but you can um, you can empty them out by just uh, scratching them with something like a palette knife or whatever, and they become almost clean again. And if you have, you make one for if you the only thing if you using white pencils and charcoal in the same doesn't work really well because not really clean enough so you do one for each and that's all and that's all maybe I'm not so it's, it's I should think to almost stroke it with little strokes like they're brush strokes almost Acrylic nail file? What is this? Uh huh, I see. Well, I'm much I, I much I feel much better about copying an artist in 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 the context of learning and I only do this for the channel to be honest because I think it's a good learning exercise I think it's interesting and I think it doesn't put the spotlight on me I'm not like saying oh look at my art look at my art look at what Florent Farge is doing uh, my art is so amazing look at me you know uh, sometimes I want to just chill and, and think about other artists that I admire. I think a, making a 
copy in this case it's a good good content because everybody can learn if you like the artist you'll learn you like the copy you can learn from the techniques so in the context of an educational channel like that a copy is much better what you're talking about what you were suggesting earlier is making what's called a pastiche which is making a like copying the style of an artist or doing it the same types of subject with a different style um, and I feel less cool about that for example trying to get the, the Vincent brush style I'm not as I wouldn't like to you know, do one of my paintings by trying to do the style of Vincent. But I don't mind making a, a, a perfect copy if it is for, um, for educational purpose, because it's, there is a context in there. See what I'm, I'm, how I'm thinking about it. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm very clear. Been talking for two hours and it's way too, way too long for my brain. Brain has stopped working. I'm pretty sure I'm not approaching the sketch how he would do it, but hey, it's it's also pretty tough. I mean, artists are so different for a reason, right? And sometimes I have this debate with um, people online, like like your style is not really something you choose. It's more something you're uh, assigned with at birth, almost. Like you can work on it, you can, like if you're excessively tight, let's say, you can work on loosening up. But the style is what feels good. And you're not inherently tight in your brain you'll never paint tightly naturally you'll you can force yourself to but and the style in general is the same way also the kind of the themes that you paint What do you think? What do you think? Do you think style can be changed? You can work on it. I I'm not saying that you can't. But it I'm saying at the end of the day, the style is your style is what feels natural. So it's not something you can learn. Because even if you learn, you, you copy the style of someone else. Well, you didn't choose to copy the style of a certain person on randomly, right? You chose to copy the style of a certain type of artist because you are naturally more attracted to a certain type of art. So it's also your style. Even if you copy, let's say, oh yes, style is, 
is nothing because this guy is just copying, uh, I don't know, a sergeant. So C style is, is not natural. It's like these people are trying to copy other artists. Yes, but they chose Sargent. They didn't choose Bouguereau for a reason. That's how I see it. Alright, for sure, style can definitely shift. Look at Vincent's work, he would have stayed in the dim dark had he not met other impressionists. Yeah, you're right though. I agree with that. I agree with that. My, my way of thinking about it though, is more like, it's not the style that has shifted, it's he was not being himself at first. And he found himself through meeting people because like people change you you change people people change you that's our life is much more intersubjective than we want to believe we all want to you know we, there's this uh, big in the western in the western society in western culture we have this this very strong idea of the individual it makes us believe that our life is almost um, entirely individualistic and subjective but actually our personalities are much more intersubjective than we want to believe like some some Others can also be a part of you, right? And you can experience that with uh, with uh, your um, your children when you have children, for example, young children. They become a, a little part of you in a weird way and that's good it helps them oh so, yeah so the way i see it coming back to vincent is it's not his uh style that changed it's more his his entire existence his he came to life It's hard to get these eyes. So Balsam says, it's style and sound to change. I want to paint loosely so bad, but I end up painting tight and adding more detail. Yeah, you have to, you have to start, um, You have to start getting in 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 terms in good terms with with um so at the end of the day when you stop thinking about it so hard what sticks is it tight or loose because you can't lie to yourself like like the bad habits maybe that you have like sure if you if you learn art with an artist that really pushes his students to paint like him and, or her and the this artist they they want everybody to paint like them so they say that it's a bad habit it's a bad habit you're too tight it's a bad habit well, maybe the bad habits are what defines you as an artist. Maybe the bad habits are the best ones. Maybe the good habits are all those who are not part of you. 
you know, all the bad habits, those that you can't, you know, get rid of. What you do over and over again. Maybe those are what defines you as an artist. Like they say in the song, my bad habits lead to me. My bad habits lead to me. I know whose song it is. I know there was a, a cover with uh, Bring Me the Horizon, so I know this song. Yes. Your handwriting is always your handwriting. If you switch to cursive or use a different pen or work on your handwriting. How long does it take to get a likeness? Well, we'll see with this one. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, it took Vincent his entire art journey to nail his own likeness. And you see how in every painting, he didn't, doesn't get, he doesn't always nail the likeness exactly right. And, and some, some self portraits are better than others. Um, how long does it take? How long in terms of years of training or how long in terms of uh, starting a drawing and finishing it? If it's the, 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 the first one, uh, it depends really how hard you train every day, but a long time. And how long does it take to, um, if it's the, the, the other, uh, then refer to the first one because um the, the 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 more you're trained the faster it gets to then make your work happen sounds a lot like philosophy yeah well there is a lot of common grounds with uh between art and philosophy which is why it was so so easy for me to you know jump from one to the other. Hello, Gina. Hello, Dill. I suppose, but he was still himself. Yourself is just a momentary thing. You would never be yourself otherwise, because you we are constantly learning. Maybe you are never yourself. What is? yourself what is yourself are you the same self that you were when you were five what is the self maybe the self being yourself is always something that you have to make happen every day you have to always be in the process of being yourself to be yourself it's not something oh, okay i'm i am myself no it's an it's something that you always have to make happen. Hey, Jinistan, I also like to draw. From my Venga audiobooks, his dark form paintings are even more authentic than his bright landscape. Theo pushed him in that direction for a long time. So we'd say the, the most well-known, the most famous stuff is less authentic. Is that what you're saying? Hmm, interesting. Interesting take. Yeah, I'm, I'm way past, I'm sorry, I missed a ton of the chat. I truly believe he found his genius and his mental illness will not allow that to happen. I think they're, it's more like they're different parts of his personality in a way. We're all going into philosophy talking about the self and all, but um, 
it's like a, a an inner demon like almost Doc Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, right? But I think they, they live, in my opinion, they live side by side, but I don't know much about uh, what it feels exactly. So, but I would say they mostly from my understanding, it's more two different sides of, of a coin, right? Um, yes, I can do that. It's true that the palette doesn't have uh, much to show. I can do that. I need to move this. All right. There you go. Yeah, parent shots was not not essential this time. I agree. so that you can see that or you'll think that I'm just weird doing stuff here in the background I don't know yeah it's a big debate though is, is style um, is style you know something you can change or not you can you can um, you can work on it though so this you can you can try to change it modify it to the on the surface the surface level of your style you can alter you can change and improve but I think the best is to find the style that drives you, the kind of subject matter that you like to work on, and just do what feels right. It's still possible to do something else and do what doesn't feel right, but it's never a good choice in my opinion, it never produces great art. I don't know, it's my take. Because at the end of the day, you will just try to make art that feels forced and you'll feel terrible about it. You'll not have fun. have to be super sharp for for this type of portrait it's actually better if it's not sharp it's a bit blunt so that you can do the little the little almost 
pencil strokes. Almost, it's not brush strokes, it's pencil. Oh yeah, not careful, colorful not to tap tap your your pencil. All I um I have um I have a little um a little mat. I think it's a a you know a desktop a desktop hand hand rest that you put next to your keyboard. See and and it's kind of uh, it's kind of um foamy in a way it has a nice texture and sometimes i put my brushes on them so that it, it's a little pencil mat uh old blue jeans as well they work and sometimes this is what i use first of all it collects a bit of the dust so and you know you can drop things on there you don't think about it, but it's actually like little details like that. Oh, yeah. Why do we you suppose we connect so readily? Oh, because we evolved. We evolved like that. Selected like humans were selected. Or, I don't know, maybe far way be before humans uh, were selected because um, because they had white in their eyes so you can see where they're looking at. So when you're a social animal like we are, you want to know what the other person is uh, is looking at. You want to know what the other person is thinking about, what they're looking at. And you trust more a person that if you can see what they're seeing, basically. And we evolve like our entire evolution, social evolution, evolutionary biology made us like that. We have an absolutely insane focus on the eyes. We can, from a blurry photo, we can see where a person is looking at. From Yeah, it's, it's crucial and it was crucial for the survival of the tribes of our very, very old ancestors from back then. And the tribes who didn't have these eyes didn't survive. And those who focused insanely on eyes got selected through natural selection. It's interesting about the newborns. My best tip about anatomy is don't sweat about it. It's important and all, but Mm. Not as much as other stuff. Like you don't have to know all the muscles inside of the 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 shoulder to paint a shoulder right. Just focus on 
the ability to draw and paint what you're looking at. Like, I don't know how many cartilage are in a nose. I'm just trying to look at how it's done on my model and do the same. That's all. Like, don't sweat the anatomy. I think it's overhyped. Unless you make, you know, a lots of imagination drawing. Um, stuff like that. It's also anatomy was an old heritage of an era when they didn't have really the time to study from life. They didn't have photos. So anatomy was way more useful before. Like if you can get a photo of a model, you don't need the anatomy lessons to, um, to um, replicate what you see. It wasn't, it's not always been like that. So um, for a very long time, anatomy was absolutely crucial because when you can't have a photo reference all the time, like anatomy is super crucial because, well, you have to make a lot of things from, from just your knowledge of anatomy. But mo nowadays, if you want to draw a figure for a project, just try to get a reference photo. Just draw or paint what the photo tells you. Um, anatomy can help, um, you know, if it's not clear, for example, like the abs are not clearly delineated, but you know how they're supposed to look. So you can change it, modify it, idealize it. Uh, other than that, the like you don't need to be a beast at anatomy to draw well. Most things. Hello, Batuan. May you please draw a kitten? Oh, I would love to. But I need one. I need a kitten. Would you sell me a kitten? Would you mail me a kitten? My audio is slightly staticky. Oh, I'm sorry. It's sometimes it's my uh, this this mic here. I can just only use this one if you want. But let's try with only this one. Will be sometimes it will just be. Um, It will be, will seem farther away. Ah, sorry. Okay. Let's try it with this. No more static. Just, I just need to change this. Okay. Now when I'm talking like that, can you hear me properly? Just I put the mic almost in, <laughs> almost in front of my drawing board right here. <laughs> kind of awkward, but hey. Kelly Dong, this is not nice. How old are you? Are you sure you're allowed to watch streaming like that? Thank you, Art. Are you really called Art? Your username is Art. That's insane.
Uh, I'm using no method. I'm trying to copy the, this Venga um, drawing, but I'm pretty sure I'm not using the same method as Vincent for sure. I'm using whatever I feel like, and the pencils I'm using, I'm using pretty straightforward graphite 2B and HB. That's all I have, all I have to show for. Thank you, Lily. Ah. A classmate in school, in school that was named Michelangelo. Yeah, but if if the guy is not uh, talented, it's just um, it's just a shame. I I also know I used to know um, a kid called Magellan, but he was really not super smart and very bad at geography. So, I don't know, it's kind of a... Like, if you're giving a name like that to your child, you're betting on the fact that he is going to be... Or that they are going to be super smart and, and, and up to... Up to the name that you're... Um, that you're putting them up against. Basically, you're just uh, putting such a huge toll on them like oh you're named after the most famous genius of all time so now um and it's the very unusual name so everybody will know about it and uh but now good luck <laughs> it's almost it's almost a curse Is Balsam your real name? I thought it was a username, sorry. Well, that's cool. Sorry, I assumed it was a... Um was a username by the way um i think i've been maybe 30 minutes in on this one Well, thank you, Art, but like right now, I'm really just making a, a copy, so nothing to, uh, nothing to brag about. I have, um, I have a couple tutorials or Peachility. Well, um, yeah, it's it's still kind of art and always will be art. Um, always will be. And that's how it's supposed to be.
it's a big change. I can tell you it's a big change from Musha. Last time was Musha. Hello, Socrates. Oh no, it doesn't get easier. You get better at f dealing with the frustration and just starting over quickly and fixing your mistakes quickly. It's a saying, like I'm always saying that it's like a lot of uh, people think that, hey, well, these uh, professional artists, they never do mistakes. It's like it's so natural for them. And how how come I always make mistakes and and they always it's always so easy for them. And I'm always like, no, 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 don't 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 get fooled by uh, like making it look easy is very different from it being actually easy. And whenever you see an artist, a master artist, like doing th something like easily, um, m be sure that there are mistakes being made. It's just that the mistakes are spotted immediately and corrected and fixed almost instantly so that you don't see them. But if you rewind to what I've been doing right here, just check how many times I've erased, how many times I've changed uh, the position of anything. And I'm, I'm actually pretty slow today. So normally I'm a bit quicker uh, to, um, to deal with this kind of stuff, but the, the the actual the name of the game is it's not like you don't make mistakes it's you just fix them and deal with them faster Thank you, Felicia. I'm married with, with one and a half kid. <laughs> exactly. But soon, soon he'll count for a double. Soon count for double. This mouth is extremely hard to make. I can't imagine making a painting after Vincent. It's too hard. doing stuff that you don't see so let me reposition and this mouth is pretty hard to nail and Vincent himself had a Was 
start over. Sometimes I do this to kind of blur off the lines. Try to start fresh. Uh, Vincent himself did a, a mouth study just next to this sketch. I'm pretty sure he did his drawing in like he did this drawing so much faster than me which isn't hard to be fair You right, Clover. Hello, Andrea. Mouths uh, are the worst, and they are the worst to to pronounce. Even like mouths. How are you supposed to say that? Mouths. It's it's a nightmare. I agree. Right, try saying Ving. So the pronunciation is Vinghoch. Vinghoch. I, I never know really if it's Vinghoch or Vinghoch. But I'm pretty sure. Okay, the vein hoch. So the, the toughest one to say is best. Thanks. Good. I'm, I'm happy. The one that I've been dreading was the good one is the best. Okay. Okay. Making my life easier, definitely. Oh, I had the... I had a little trick 
for uh, today's presentation for the how long did I take I took talked for a while and I tried to always say Vincent <laughs> that's my trick that is another trick those lazy to try to pronounce the Dutch spelling Chin. Chin is a little bit more elongated. It feels like a V shape like that. Goes all the way. So confused because I left the live for a second for real and it changed to a video. Ah, uh, you know, sometimes YouTube has messy autoplay. It, it can happen. <laughs> Something's not quite right. Nose wider. It's soon it's going to be Vincent's birthday here at my local time. Soon midnight. It's March the 30th. Can't believe it's already March 30.
Thank you Drenzak for the super chat, your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you Can Adrian. we get some GG's in the chat? Thank you very much for the super chat, awesome! 30, what does 30 mean? Thank you for the message 30, what does it mean? Well anyway, the super chat is very much appreciated, thank you very much. I don't age until the clock strikes 3 p.m. Oh, March the 30th, I guess, to celebrate uh, Vincent. Yeah, oh, it's, it's the date. 30 is the day. I guess. That's what it is. That's what it's all about. Big GG's. Adrian. Wow. This kind of drawing style tell you is very um It's not great to copy because you're mostly trying to mimic something that was natural when it was made. And since you're copying it, it can't be natural anymore. Because you're copying it, you're trying to do each, you know, little hatch separately. You want to try to take inspiration from the the hatching style more than trying to replicate each individual hatch, but still. Doesn't feel very, doesn't feel very natural. It's really not what you want. You want, if you do like right now, it's because I it was all about Vincent and I wanted to make a, a little study on one of his uh, self-portraits, but normally what you want is not this kind of copy material. You want something that has less stylistic uh, less of a stylistic signature maybe something more neutral to copy if you can because it's very awkward to try to copy the style of of, uh, of an artist it's a style that's very very personal very unique trying to copy a a hatching style like that feels kind of weird So should I recreate the missing part or should I leave it like that? I'm gonna leave it like that. I think I made him more buff than than reality. Realistic and beautiful, thank you. Doing my best. This one is not easy. I've I had way more easy. Uh, I had a way easier time uh, copying Mucha last time. 
you know, the more stylistically marked uh, a work is, the harder it is, or the, the and the more awkward it feels to to make a copy from. The eyes are too symmetrical. His eyes are never straight. I don't know. I'm trying to do my best from the model that I have. So you do your own research and do your own copies if you want. I'm doing my best. You know, what can I do? Uh, the fact, like, I don't know. You can't say his eyes were never straight. Um, I don't know. That's that's how they look on my model, and maybe they're not there yet. But uh, it's a work in progress. If you haven't you haven't seen this yet, so maybe I'll figure it out. Maybe I won't. I don't start with the idea that the eyes should not be symmetrical. I start with, I see a model and I'm trying to do my best to copy from it. I don't start with assumptions like that. It kind of fails your vision, then maybe as an art historian you can, but. It wouldn't help for uh, what I'm trying to do. See, I'm more worried about the nose. I'm more uh, worried about the nose, Paul. And I, I think I always welcome criticism, but I think the nose, in my case, is has something wrong, and it feels like my my Vincent is more buff. So there is a problem with the width somewhere. Um, so I'm more worried about that right now. The model is more skinny looking. Those look great. Well, uh, I'm sorry. I, I wish there could be um, a view where you see the, the model next. There is just something not quite right. It's not much though. And it's the, the toughest, the toughest uh, thing to fix is when it's just a couple millimeters of a difference makes it very hard because it's not something absolutely absolutely obvious it's generally tiny things and this Sorry to say, but the tiny things are also what makes portraits and likeness. So it's not like you can say, oh, whatever. 
If you want likeness, you have to worry about those tiny things. Yeah, exactly. That tiny thing will make the definitions better for the far perspective. Yes, this is Vincent, old Ironside. Well, thanks, Adrian. In my case, in this case, actually, I'm, I'm still trying to be as uh, faithful as I can. not trying to make it my version though i'm i'm still doing my best with the abilities that i have to try to make it look like the original i will make my version of a thing when it's my work my like an original I'm um, I'm super exciting excited to to work more on my originals live next uh, next Monday I uh, next what is it Tuesday I think uh, I'll make uh, I'll be moving on with my painting big painting big project and I have big hopes for this one oh man. yeah it's going to be good because um, it's like this painting that um, you know, I have here in the background it's been it's been um, on the side for far too long and, and it feels like I've finally reconnected with this painting it's a it's always been a love-hate relationship with this and now we're back together it's and I think we're back together for good so I'm very, I'm relieved and I'm, I'm, I can't wait. Like it's been a while, but with this painting, I finally reached a, a point that makes me impatient to, to wake up in the morning and, and start again. It's been a while for this painting. So it's a small victory because this doesn't mean it's the, the work is done. Still a lot of work left to do, but it's good when it happens like that. Hello, Elusive Pro Tree. Finally, I got recommended something good. Makes me want to draw again. Well, you should. That's exactly the spirit of these uh, these moments we're having together. We're trying to get inspiration from each other, and today we had a, a wonderful amount of inspiration from Vincent here. Um, like the if you rewind the entire early parts of the 
of the stream was just uh, me talking about Vincent's and not just uh, everything Vincent, just the early career. Uh, we tried to solve a, a couple of mysteries and how uh, how Vincent came to be the artist that he's known for. And, um, and now we're making a little study in just, uh, just for fun. For, uh, for shits and giggles, as they say. I don't know if they say that. Who says that? Not me. I shouldn't say that. Not polite. Awesome, elusive poetry. Grab your supplies. See chat, you can congratulate yourself. We inspired someone and I know that some of you have been also doing um, doing drawing studies. Maybe this one uh, um, at the same time as I'm doing it. Post it in the Discord when you are done. Don't forget. Sharing is caring. So uh, Discord is the place to share. Like when you're done with your... Whatever you're doing. Just... Um, you can post it in Show Your Art. Share with the lovely people here. Type exclamation point discord if you want to um, get the invite link. Thank you, Felicia, for bringing up the link. All right. Can you time me out, though? I don't know. Never tried. It would be a, an awful lot of power for, for the mods, though. But... <laughs> you can't see your power has limits. Uh, oh yes, Adrian. Well, this one is very, very little compared to uh, compared to what I normally do. So yeah, I've been talking like, I think you can still rewind the, the stream. And I've been talking most of the time. We've been looking at paintings uh, and drawings by Vincent most of the stream. And we're just finally uh, reaching the end and relaxing with a nice little uh, drawing study together. So getting each other inspired. Discussing, just chatting. My mods are trying to ban me. You know, usual, usual stuff. But it's all in good, 
Good spirit, good spirit. <laughs> Rest assured that my mods can't time me out or ban me. So, um... Uh, yet. Yet. Actually, you know what? I could, with the, the same program that I program Steven with, I could... I think I can even program something that would allow the mods to end the stream. <laughs> like technically, yes, this is doable. Like I can hit, I can create a kill switch, but I'm not gonna, because that's, they're gonna be drunk with, with power if, if I allow them to do that. Better keep them happy then. Is this a special paper? Uh, nah, it's kind of a um, very regular paper. It's just a sort of cream, cream toned paper, I guess. Please say hi. Hi. How are you doing? Can you tell me about the pencil again? Uh, how you make the pencil long? Um, mm -mm -mm. I have a video on my channel about that. Check out my videos. And look for a video with a super sharp long pencil in the thumbnail. I don't remember the title exactly, but um, I don't know if the mods can post links. So just look out uh, on on my channel. I have a I have a full explanation on that. Yeah, well, it's, it has a bit of grain. It's not like your, you know, the paper that you put in your printer and you make copies with. It's still art quality drawing paper. It's not super special. It's not like Arch. It's not like uh, um, Fabriano, whatever. It's not Roma paper or anything like one of the fanciest. Uh, it's not Hannon Mill. It's... What is this? Pretty much like regular Kenson paper, I don't know. Toned, cream. Like I don't consider the paper super special. It's decent quality, it's the kind of stuff that I only need for little stream sessions like that. Sketch. I, I, I use it for sketching. Any advice for a person who wants to get better at figure drawings? Have been practicing and drawing from life for a few months now. Um, now. 
it's hard to find something like if you've been practicing is my only advice is just uh yeah keep going and yeah keep going i don't know i don't know what else to say keep going seems to be the best piece of advice advice i can give Like maybe if I had a a certain situation with a context, I could tell you, oh, in this case you should change this. Or maybe if I was uh, seeing a drawing, I could say that. Like if you was uh, sending me the picture for a critique, I would say that. But yeah, um, well you can you can if you go on in the Discord. Well, that could be the advice that I should give you is go in the Discord. We have a, we actually have a selection for, for that. Go in classical. And people do figure drawing here. Um, just go ahead and I'm, I'm looking because sometimes it's a NSFW. So just making sure not safe for YouTube actually, but we have a classical atelier uh, channel. We also have a community critique where you can post pictures for uh, the community to critique. So go ahead and click on that if you're interested. And that's that's the best uh, best piece of advice I can give. Sometimes my drawings end up super dark while I try to make the volume pop up. Um, okay. I don't see exactly what you're referring to, but it's just, it's all about the balance. It's like, it has to be dark at some places and it has to be light at some others. It's like, imagine a musician saying, yeah, I'm going to make this song really heavy. so. I'm going to make it loud all the time. Like in terms of metal, for example, if you're playing metal, you say, oh, I'm going to make this song ultra heavy. So it's super heavy all the time. You want some parts that are lighter and some parts that are very strong. So you want dark, you want light, you want uh, brutal and, and, and percussive. And you also want light and, and, and more, uh, you know, uh, like he, there is, and this is, I, this analogy means nothing. I've been painting, I've been talking for three hours, so excuse me for that. This analogy means nothing, but uh, the, it's all about the balance. You want to balance it out. You know, some parts have to be dark, but you can't just make everything dark. And um, Try to separate on your palette. I think separate the dark on your palette from the light and have a little scale. Try to organize your palette in a, creating little steps of values. Try to focus really on the values and try to really balance, focus on balancing out. It's almost like you have the... You hit the luminosity all the way all the way up or all the way down and you need to find the, the right um, the right balanced way to work my my, my um, what I'm saying makes less and less sense so I'm going to assume that I'm reaching a point where I'm slowly getting tired. Fortunately, I'm also getting close to the end with this Vincent 
portrait. I know it's not Vincent style, but I'm going to make it all more my own. And I'm not going to do just cross hatching. I'm going to just use the cross hatching and add a touch of uh, actual shading into the cross hatching just to reinforce the volume a little bit. Make the sketch a little bit less flat. Yeah, I know it's not in the original, but I'm also going to do some little white cross hatches. It's not an original. I'm I'm taking liberties here. I like it. Taking advantage of the fact that I'm using a cream paper. Can't do that with white paper. Sometimes I go in too dark and that ends up happening to me also when getting eager to make it show that usually I recently starting, started taking time on whatever sketch I start and the results are better. Nice, um, Socrates, thanks. Thank you, Solarium. This is so thick, sick. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Well, something's off with the mouth, but I, I don't think I'll have time to fix it today. And and quite frankly, I think I'll fix it never. Because uh, when I'm done with this stream, I'm, I'm never touching this drawing ever again. But... Um, you shout out my name, and I shout out yours. Generally, it's polite to say hello before you ask something to someone. Just saying. I'm just saying. Alright, is something from vertical streaming ever since I started streaming vertically? There's people who come pop up like that and ask you random stuff. Strange. Strange crowd, but welcome, welcome, welcome. It's usually polite here in the world of human beings, it's polite to say hello. and interact with the chat before you ask 
random stuff. I don't know how it happens in your world. But in this world, this is how it goes. Yeah, anyone? Anyone says sketch fast and do a sketch in 10-15 minutes? Well, this is not the style of the house. We like to take our time here. Because I'm picky. I'm a perfectionist. And this is how I learned. I can't leave a drawing if it's... If it doesn't feel exactly right. Slightly, it's very, very almost not noticeable. When sketching home, I try not to use the stump. Yeah, I try to avoid it as well. Really, the stump is... I don't have any. Um, it's a drawing killer. Really, it kills the drawings. In my opinion, I don't know. I don't hate how... I don't like how it crushes the texture, you can't see the grain of the paper, you can't see nothing anymore due to the stump. And if anything, if I need something like that, I can just fold a piece of paper towel. Sometimes what I do is I use a little brush as well if I need to, uh, let's say, you know, blend a little area like that, an old brush works better even even though the, the brush will have a tendency to remove some of the more than a stump the stump will just spread as the brush will remove a bit of the of the pigments
All right. Okay, my friends, okay. This was a good session. Really glad we had this time together. It's fun. We should do it more often. You should check out the channel. Make sure you are subscribed and make sure you have the bell notification on because we're going to have a lot of streams like that. And we have to see part two of the Vincent saga. And we have many more to check out, many more artists um, and fun art stuff, inspiring stuff. Next time, grab your pencil, grab your paintbrush, grab whatever you want that's art related and meet me for the next stream. Thank you for being here. Leave a like before you go and I'll see you for the next one, my friends. Bye bye.